Ahoy me hearties, welcome to another swashbuckling video here at the ancient pirate ship of our ancestors. Yar, yar. Today, scallywags, we be taking a look at the wonderful game, Sid Meier's Pirates. Har, har, har. That's pr probably enough of that, I think. Um, Sid Meier's Pirates is a swashbuckling pirate adventure game developed by Firaxis Games and published initially by Atari and later 2K Games. It was released in 2004. Why can't pirates say the entire alphabet? Because they always get stuck on... Arr! It be that fabled time in this thou video, where I parlay with ye landlubbers and ask ye if ye find me worthy to press the wonderful subscribe button and give us a like and comment on your favourite pirate games. So ye sniffling dogs, this here video game was a remake of the seminal Commodore 64 game created by Sid Meier in 1987. It involved captaining a crew as you sailed around the Caribbean getting into all sorts of adventures. Sid Meier's Pirates has a wonderful start menu. You can play the pirate game, load one if you fancy, change your system options, visit the Firaxis website, visit the Hall of Champions, the view the credits, and lastly, you can quit. Har. Like in that thar old school classic, you take on the role of a ship's captain, initially allied to one of the four factions, the English, French, Dutch and Spanish. They will set you off with the suggestions of pester whoever they are initially at war with. But you are free to go where the wind takes you, across the sea in search of booty and riches. The stylized graphics work really well for this sort of game. That romantic and of course quite unrealistic view of being a pirate on the Spanish main, capturing enemy ships and laying claim to all sorts of gold, is portrayed in this cartoony and light-hearted way. They hold up pretty well 18 years later, yes, snivelling dogs. In case anyone was wondering, it works perfectly well on a modern Windows 10 setup, though there is a limit to the resolution you can set. Your music is very fitting too, with sea shanties aplenty as you sail the seas looking for adventure. When engaged in battle with another ship, the roaring thunder of a broadside blasting into an enemy vessel is a satisfying sound to behold. Rather than voice lines of dialogue, the different characters you come across on your travels will mumble incoherent syllables as the text lays out at the bottom of the screen. This works fine. So what do you actually get up to in your adventures on the sea in the sunbathed Caribbean islands? Well, the world is your oyster, as they say here in the briny deeps. You see, your scallywags, the map consists of lots of islands featuring settlements of different factions with lots of sea between them. You can sail off in any direction you like to do whatever you like. On the sailing screen, you'll see numerous other ships going about their own business, being merchants, pirates, privateers or naval vessels of war. There is, of course, a thin story running throughout the game of you trying to find your lost family members. Besides this, you are free to do whatever you like and go wherever you like. This includes going after opposing faction ships, pirate hunting, you can even go for your own country's vessels if you fancy. If you're not into the life of a swashbuckler on the high seas, you can instead focus only on trade and peaceful operations, avoiding all the ship battles and duelling on the ship's prow. Oh. Within the life of a pirate or merchant, there involves several minigames for you to partake in. There is the dueling minigame where you embark on a one-on-one -on -one fight with an opposing ship's captain, where you must parry and dodge incoming attacks before striking true with your own whirling blade. Yes indeed, me hearties. The stylized graphics worked well here with the dueling, feeling very cinematic with dashing twirls and dodges and all sorts. You will fight on the deck and the plank while sliding down the stairs between sword thrusts. Then there is the dance of another type. Should you be invited to the governor's ball, you must perform a dance with the governor's daughter. To succeed, you will need to press the right buttons at the right time, lest you fall over your own feet and embarrass yourself immensely. If you perform well, she will shower you with gifts and perhaps your hand in marriage. Ship combat involves you steering your ship across the ocean in a dance with the opposing vessel. Here you must use the wind to your advantage as you attempt to outmaneuver your foe, avoiding their cannon fire while trying to connect with your own. I like the ship combat a lot as there is a few levels of nuance and strategy when battling it out. Which shot should you use, how close do you want to get without triggering a boarding action, which way is the wind headed and could you use it to outmaneuver the opposing vessel. It's all good fun. Arr. 
Besides combat on the seas, you can sometimes engage in combat on land against lily-livered landlubbers. This takes the form of a grid and turn-based system. You can control a number of units depending on the size of your crew pitted against the militia of the local town. It is decent enough, though I wouldn't attack unless you have a great many people in your crew. The one common thing amongst the different minigames is the use of the numpad for control. I'm not sure why entirely, perhaps because of console releases or a wish for fully functional keyboard control without the need of the mouse. It's a bit weird to be honest, but luckily the mouse can be used for certain actions. For example, in naval combat there are buttons for different directions, but you can happily use the mouse to steer your ship around the screen. Right clicking also fires your ship's cannons. The dancing seems to make use of the numpad exclusively, with no option for using the mouse, while I found myself using a combination of mouse and numpad whenever I found myself in a duel on a ship's deck. Of all the tasks you can embark on, this old dwarven sea dog likes to go plundering of enemy ships and pirates wherever I can find them. I usually go for any suitable ship within reach, initiating combat by moving close to them. For there are different targets you can go for on the high seas and you should pick right. A wealthy trade ship for instance, then you can find yourself with piles of riches. Start a fight with a powerful pirate or naval vessel though and you might find yourself shipwrecked and penniless. Once you've plundered some booty, taken an enemy ship or filled your cargo hold with all manner of goods, you'll want to transport them to a port somewhere where you can sell your goods and ships. Should you wish to, of course. <laughs> when you enter a port town, there are several options available to you. You will usually find a merchant, the leader of the local populace like a governor or mayor, an inn and a shipwright. The merchant will buy and sell goods with you, their gold and goods stocks depending on the prosperity of the town they are in and what they have access to. You will want to sell your cargo for more than you bought it for if you are a simple merchant of the seas, or if you stole it all then you might just want to offload it for whatever you can get. The governor or other leadership person can increase your rank with the town's specific faction, along with royal letters permitting you to attack other faction's ships. If you are lucky, you might be able to court their daughter as well. The inn is an interesting place indeed. Here you can recruit more sea dogs to man your vessels, <laughs> receive information on potential targets or long lost family members, and purchase items like maps to bury treasure, pistols and better dueling weaponry. The shipwright is an important lifeline for your vessels. After battles on the high seas, me hearties, it is the shipwright that you will need to visit to have your ship repaired and brought back to a healthy state in which to acquire more plunder. Certain shipwrights will also allow you to upgrade different parts of your ship. For example, extra protective plating, faster sails and different types of shot. You will need to make use of these to gain every advantage out of the water. Lastly, it is here at the shipwrights where you can sell any ships you have captured on your journeys. Be careful to clear up their cargo holds before selling them, as any goods they are transporting will be lost. Of course, dear scally viewers, we need to talk about the ships. If you capture any ships in your adventures, they will be added to your fleet, dutifully following as you sail around the map. Should you wish, you can switch out your current flagship, the thing that does all the fighting, to any other ship you have captured. In this way you can obtain better ships by first defeating their original captain. You can switch up to brigs, other sloops and great galleons. Interestingly it isn't a simple case of bigger is better. A small sloop can easily outmaneuver a great galleon, avoiding a hungering wrath of a fierce broadside. Indeed I found with larger slower ships I was forced into more duels as I was too slow to avoid enemies even though I wished to blast them with an impressive blast of cannon fire. Another important option at most ports is the opportunity to divvy up all the spoils from your adventures of the high seas between yourself and the crew. This stands as kind of a reset once you've been out adventuring for quite a while. The ship's crew, I found, would become mutinous if you're at sea for too long, with their happiness dropping drastically. Once you share out the gold, you spend a while relaxing and getting the urge to head back out into the high seas. Yarr. You can then take to the waves once again with your old ship and a new, happier crew. So thoughts on this era game, me hearties. I think this is definitely a wonderful and joyous title that enables us, dear viewers, to take on the role of a pirate quite gleefully. Ship to ship fighting is responsive and thrilling, while the duels against enemy captains are highly cinematic in their feel, with lots of fun animations as you go about with your trusty sword. If you are looking for a game where you can basically be a pirate, then this is the game for you. 
It features all the content you would hope for in such a game, creating a great package for you to delve into. As with a lot of games I feature here in the ancient galleon of our ancestors, it is quite often on sale, though even when it's not, it's pretty cheap. This is a great addition to your game library, so go check it out. And there we are, dear viewers. Yarrr! Another treasure of a video game talked about nonsensically by this here silly dwarf. I hope you enjoyed the video and I wish you strong winds in your sails on the high seas. Goodbye dear scallywags and I shall see you next time. Yarrr!